Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Before Justin Fuente arrived, Virginia Tech had not suffered a losing season since 1992. But now the Hokies have suffered losing seasons in two of the last five years, including a 5-6 and six mark last year. So needless to say, it's a huge year six for Justin Fuente in Blacksburg. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert here to predict the Virginia Tech Hokies schedule and their record going into 2021. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and make sure to check out everything down in the description below because we have so much exclusive content there for you guys, including our brand new expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. There you can sign up for some of the best college football spread picks in the entire country. And now for our five-year anniversary here at the channel, you can gain access to our NFL expert picks for the first time ever, our NFL expert picks. So do not miss out on those. Go take a look over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. I promise you do not want to miss out on that offer. So again, guys, we are talking about Virginia Tech today. And man... They need a big year in Blacksburg. Look, cut a lot of teams some slack from 2020. COVID ran rampant throughout the country, and Virginia Tech was one of the teams that got hit the hardest. But they need a major bounce-back year. They need to contend for a coastal crown. Can they do it? We look at the offense, guys. Six starters are back on that side of the ball, but they lose a lot. Hendon Hooker has transferred to Tennessee. Khalil Herbert, who rushed for over 1,100 yards last year, is now gone. And Christian Darisol, their leader, their big man up front on the offensive line, has now gone to the NFL. It is really up to Braxton Burmeister at quarterback to lead this Hokies offense, one that sputtered at times last year, especially in the passing game, one that averaged just 200.6 passing yards per game. The in really encouraging thing, I think, for the Hokies is the fact that their top four pass catchers do return from 2020. That includes Trey Turner. That includes Tavion Robinson. Each had over 500 reception yards last year and three touchdowns. Burmeister has to be the leader for the Hokies because below him, the depth-wise, there's no one there at quarterback. So help is going to be vital to their success on the offensive side of the ball. That is going to be the key for Virginia Tech because when you look at their defense, eight starters are back on that side of the ball, and that's going to be their early strength in 2021. Justin Hamilton is now in year two as defensive coordinator, taking over for the legendary Bud Foster. But cut him some slack in 2020, guys. Virginia Tech allowed 32.1 points per game, the most points they allowed per game since 1973. But this was a team that was rattled by COVID, was rattled by injuries. Justin Hamilton himself, even suffering from COVID, have to miss a few games. There is talent at all three levels for Virginia Tech. Talent on the defensive line talent in the linebacking core, talent in the secondary. This is going to be a much better defense than we saw last year, and it's going to be the side of the ball that might have to carry them through the early part of this season. Because when you take a look at Virginia Tech's schedule, guys, you'll notice that the first six games are very difficult as compared to the final six. North Carolina, at West Virginia, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh. None of those games scream easy to me. None of those games scream easy win. To me. And we'll go ahead and just start with North Carolina. North Carolina on Friday night. What a way to kick off the 2021 season. And it's hard to believe that this is a game, guys, that could determine who wins the ACC Coastal. And you always hate to say that. You think it's ridiculous to say that in week one. But as we said before, three teams can win this division, at least in our eyes. And that's North Carolina, Miami, and Virginia Tech. How those three teams fare against one another will determine who wins the Coastal Division. That's why this game is so huge. Virginia Tech gets the benefit, gets the edge of hosting North Carolina in this game. They fell to the Tar Heels 56-45 last year. And I will say that if I, you know, if this game was scheduled later, late October, early November, I might be calling for an upset here in favor of Virginia Tech. But we're not doing that in the first week of the season. We are picking the Tar Heels to come on the road and get the win. North Carolina returns eight starters on defense. They return eight starters on offense as well, including Sam Howell, who threw for over 3,500 yards last year. 
The Tar Heels average 537.2 yards per game. I think they own the edge on defense. I think they own the edge on offense. The only place where North Carolina does not own the edge to me in this game is by not having home field advantage. And we know how difficult Lane Stadium can be at night on a Friday night, week one. I get it. I'm not saying it's going to be a blowout. But we do believe that Matt Brown's team is better equipped to win this game, at least this early in the season. So Virginia Tech drops this game. We do believe they bounce back with a win over Middle Tennessee State. They then travel to West Virginia. And I love this cry, you know, out-of-conference matchup, really. Big 12, ACC, I love it. You look at West Virginia, guys. On top of loving this matchup, I have to say that I just love this team. West Virginia is doing great things under Neil Brown. And this is a team, guys, that can win anywhere from maybe seven to nine games in 2021. Eight starters return on offense, including their quarterback in Jarrett Dagey, and including one of the better running backs within the Big 12 in Letty Brown. West Virginia also returned six starters on defense from a unit that had the top-ranked passing defense in the country last year. West Virginia was first in the nation last year when it came to stopping the pass, allowing just 159.6 passing yards per game. Let that sink in with the pass-heavy, electric Big 12 conference that West Virginia resides in. They were fourth in the nation in total defense, allowing just 291.4 yards per game. You look at Virginia Tech and the fact that they might struggle offensively, especially early on in the year, how can you say they can go on the road to West Virginia, Morgantown, a tough place to play, and beat what, again, could be one of the best defenses in the country? Neil Brown needs more signature wins. He's getting this team to a competitive level. An opportunity to beat a solid team in an out-of-conference game is just what the doctor ordered in Morgantown. West Virginia has the offensive capability to win this game. They certainly have the defensive capability. They have home field advantage, and I like the Mountaineers to beat Virginia Tech and what should be another classic game between these two teams, but one that West Virginia and Neil Brown will win. We do believe they defeat Richmond. Shouldn't have to discuss much on that. And now they're 2-2 two and two going into their early bye week, right at the beginning of October. Now 2-2 two and two with the two losses coming in their two biggest games in those four-game stretches, or in that four-game stretch. Many would say Justin Fuente needs to be gone, that he needs to be out. And I'm telling you Hokie fans, not yet. Let's hear him out. Let's wait him out. See how he does against Notre Dame. See how he does against Pittsburgh, Miami, Virginia. Give it time. Still early. Still got to give this team an opportunity to find their groove. They get a bye week. They play Notre Dame at home October 9th. And it's really crucial that Virginia Tech gets this game off the week of rest. It's also crucial they get this game at Lane Stadium. Another potential night game, which we know how difficult it is at night in Blacksburg. And you look at Notre Dame, a team that, like Virginia Tech, could struggle offensively. They have the talent at running back in Kyron Williams, but quarterback-wise, Jack Cohn, how well is he going to be playing this relatively early on in the season? How well will Notre Dame be playing after back-to-back -back games against Wisconsin and Cincinnati? Notre Dame is going to come into this game beat up, potentially having back-to-back -back losses, maybe one and one either way. Two very, very difficult games, and now they're going to have to come all the way to Blacksburg at night to face a physical Virginia Tech team. It's not really lining up. It doesn't seem to be in the cards for Notre Dame to win this game, and we don't think they will. We believe that Justin Fuente has Virginia Tech ready to go, and they will upset the Fighting Irish on October 9th. This is a game that I genuinely believe will be a defensive slugfest, a game where neither team eclipses 28 points. But home field advantage plays a big role in this one, guys, just like it will for countless teams across the country this year, maybe bet bigger than we've ever seen. The home crowd supports the Hokies on October 9th. They get a huge win over Notre Dame. Burmeister has himself a heck of a day. Yes, I know Notre Dame has a solid defense, but he does just enough to get this win over Notre Dame. They're 3-2, and two, and now they get into the bulk of their ACC conference play, and the schedule the rest of the way is relatively favorable and manageable. Virginia Tech, they're 3-2. and two. They've got confidence. They played Pittsburgh, a team they lost to 47-14 to last year. And I will say that if this game was at Pittsburgh, I might be calling for a loss for Virginia Tech. But it's in Blacksburg. It's at Lane Stadium. This team is confident. Their defense is riding high. is starting to find his groove. They beat Pittsburgh. And like the game against Notre Dame, this could be a 
relatively low-scoring game. A defensive slugfest, as Pittsburgh once again will have a solid defense. They have a solid quarterback in Kenny Pickett. Fishing offense at that. But I believe Justin Fuente and the Hokies start to find their groove. I believe they're figuring things out. And that's the win against Notre Dame that they needed to find that. They needed that win against Notre Dame to kind of find their groove and to feel a little bit more confident about themselves. Also, tack on the revenge factor. The fact they got annihilated by Pittsburgh on the road last year. They're angry about that. They take it out on the Panthers on October 16th. A win for them. A win against Syracuse. Don't need to talk much on the Orange. A team returns 19 starters. It doesn't matter. The Orange are going to struggle mightily in 2020 or 2021. They then travel to Georgia Tech. They're riding a four-game win streak now. They were 2-2. Two and two. They've now won three straight games. They travel to Georgia Tech. And this, guys, to me, lines up as a major trap game for the Hokies. And I know you're all going to say it's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. How can you beat Notre Dame? How can you beat Pittsburgh and say that Georgia Tech is a trap game? Well, look at Georgia Tech. They're a team that's getting there under Jeff Collins. They showed significant improvement in 2020. And while you may say 3-7 and seven is not significant improvement, winning three conference games, I would say, is pretty dang good for a team that's going through major, major scheme changes. 12 starters are back. Their offense is improving with Jeff Sims and Jameer Gibbs. 190.8 rushing yards per game last year for the Yellow Jackets. The defense landed some big-time transfers for Jeff Collins. And I am going to go out and say that Georgia Tech is a lot more competitive in 2021. And I'm going to go out and say that they are going to win this game over Virginia Tech on October 30th. And before people freak out, and I know you still will, why? Why Georgia Tech? Think about it. Virginia Tech every year seems to drop a game that they shouldn't. Last year at Wake Forest, maybe Liberty at home. 2019, they lost to Boston College on the road in the season opener. They lost by 35 points at home to Duke. In 2018, they lost at Old Dominion. In 2017, they lost at a 4-4 mediocre Georgia Tech team. Every year, Justin Fuente and Virginia Tech seem to lose to someone that maybe they shouldn't. This year, it's going to be Georgia Tech on the road. I smell an upset. Right around the time Virginia Tech starts to get hot, someone cools them off. This year is going to be the Yellow Jackets. Especially after they get three straight home games, four straight home games, we should add, and now they're going to get their first road game in a while. I like the Yellow Jackets to fall off an upset here. I do believe, though, that Virginia Tech bounces back. They beat Boston College. They beat the Eagles 40-14 to last year behind a strong ground game, behind a strong ground performance. While this game is on the road, while it is on a Friday night, while many would say that's more of a trap game than Georgia Tech, Boston College is a team that right now defensively is still middle of the pack. And I think Virginia Tech's offense gets better every single week here. I also think the same with their defense. Boston College is one-dimensional offensively. Phil Jerkovec, Save Flowers, would be one of the best duos in the ACC. Outside of that, they have nothing. They don't have a run game. So Virginia Tech's defense shuts down the pass or shuts down the run and forces them to pass. Whatever they decide to do, whatever scheme Justin Hamilton comes up with, they're going to find a way to make Boston College's life very difficult at home. And I just don't think the Eagles are there yet to take down what I still believe is one of the ACC elite, one of the top teams in the conference. Virginia Tech goes on the road, beats the Eagles after a tough loss at Georgia Tech. They annihilate Duke. Not much more to talk about there. Duke always tends to give Virginia Tech a tough fight. Last year, 38-31. to Why was it close? Because Virginia Tech beat themselves. Virginia Tech had too many mistakes. They still won the game, but way too many mistakes for Virginia Tech. That's why Duke hung in there. They're not going to let that happen this year. Duke's going to struggle mightily. So, pretty quick win over the Blue Devils. They end the year with back-to-back road games. You never, you never like to play back-to-back road games, especially in conference. Virginia Tech does it twice at Georgia Tech, at BC, at Miami, at Virginia. We'll start with the game against the Hurricanes. One, that still could have major implications on the Coastal, depending on what North Carolina has done and what Miami has done over the course of the year. Last year, Miami came into Blacksburg, barely escaped, beat Virginia Tech 25-24. to Well, now De'Eric King is back. Basically, everybody on offense is back for the Hurricanes. Nine starters are back on defense for the Hurricanes from a subpar unit last year. And this is still a team that will be in the hunt for an ACC Coastal Crown, could be in the hunt for the playoff, certainly will be in a hunt for a New Year's Six Bowl game. Manny Diaz, like Justin Fuente, needs a huge year three down in Miami. 
And I believe the Hurricanes get the win over the Hokies at home. They have everything they need to win this game at home, especially right here towards the end of the year. So Virginia Tech is then handed their fourth loss of the year. They travel to Virginia, their in-state rival, a team they have beat in 16 of the last 17 meetings, including last year when they beat the Cavaliers 33-15. to So Virginia Tech has dominated this series. We've known that. That's why the win back in 2019 was so monumental for Bronco Mendenhall and the Cavaliers. And the game is at home for Virginia, so many could say that's a win for the Cavaliers. We say no. Sorry, hate to break it to you. Virginia Tech defeats their in-state rival again. Yes, we know Virginia has done it in the past. Uh, they, well, they did it a couple of years ago. This is still one of those rivalry games that still feels like you need to do it a few more times to really change my mind. On top of that, Virginia had one of the, had the worst passing defense in the uh, in the ACC last year, allowing over 300 passing yards per game. If you think Braxton Burmeister hasn't hit his stride, expect him to hit his stride against the Cavaliers in the season finale. Top four pass catches are back. Defense is elite. They're ready to go. They beat the Cavaliers on the road in state rivalry game. And with that, Justin Fuente's squad finishes eight and four. That's a lot to process. Now, eight and four for Virginia Tech might seem disappointing to many. You could very well make the case for nine and three, because I know many will disagree with the Georgia Tech pick. Nine and three, I think, is the best case scenario for Virginia Tech in 2021. We like them right now at eight and four. Eight and four with a chance and a nine win season in their bowl game. That's enough to keep Justin Fuente around for another year. Build on that and contend for a Coastal Crown in 2022. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Also make sure to check out everything down in the description below. Again, our brand new expert picks. Some of the best picks for the lowest prices over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. I promise you do not want to miss out on that. Go give that a look. Hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any predictions going forward from now until the start of the season. I promise you're not going to want to miss it. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.